my brothers and my sisters who are watching and listening today. Before I begin the message, I must make this disclaimer. And disclaimer is that much of the content of this sermon is the expressed opinion of myself, Nathaniel Jeffrey Wood. And it is not the expressed opinion of the entire membership of New Providence Baptist Church. Let me make that disclaimer again, that much of the content of this sermon is the expressed opinion of me, the pastor, Nathaniel Jeffrey Wood, and is not the expressed opinion of the entire membership of New Providence Missionary Baptist Church. The conspiracy. Watch out for Absalom and Ahithophel. My brothers and sisters, the Oxford Dictionary defines the word conspiracy as a secret plan by a group to do something unlawful or harmful. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines conspiracy as the act of conspiring together, a plan secretly devised to accomplish an evil or a treacherous end. The act of plotting with others to do something harmful or unlawful. My brothers and sisters, 12 days ago was election day. 12 days ago, the American people had to decide who would lead our country in the office of president and vice president. For president, the most popular two candidates were Donald Trump and Joe Biden. For vice president, the two most popular candidates were Mike Pence and Kamala Harris. Millions of Americans cast their vote in this election. Many, due to the coronavirus pandemic, mailed their ballots in to be counted. But many Americans braved long lines and physically voted for their prospective candidate. Now, even before the election took place, there were conspiracy theories circulated about the results of the election. Our sitting President Donald 
Trump, even before the voting process could be commenced, stated publicly that the election was rigged against him. <laughs> he said that the election would be stolen from him even before the election process began. In other words, he was saying this, if he did not win the election, then his failing to win was in fact a conspiracy concocted by the Democratic Party. As far as he was concerned, he believed that there was no way in which he could lose the election. If he lost to him, it had to be, as far as he was concerned, a conspiracy against him and his party. So, again, even prior to the election, he began to circulate some false information about the election results. He and others conspired together to influence the American people not to believe the results of the election. Terrified that he might lose the election, his strategy was to spread misinformation to spread conspiracy theories and to spread outright lies in an attempt to break down public trust in the democratic process. Some of the misinformation and outright lies that he and his Conspirators told the American people were that voter fraud is rampant and widespread. He also put out that Democrats are blowing the pandemic of COVID-19 up making it far worse than what it really is. He told the American people that it is all right to vote twice, which is a felony. He also said that Joe Biden will raise everybody's taxes, and that Kamala Harris is a socialist. I'm just putting the truth out there. They also put out that discarded ballots are being found in ditches, creeks, and rivers, and that dead people are showing up to vote. <laughs> and that, when it comes down to climate change, that he knows more about the wind than anybody else. All of these conspiracy theories and other myths 
misinformation, he and those who conspire with him are spreading throughout the land. Now, 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 listen to me good before you click me off. I know that here at New Providence that I pastor both Democrats and Republicans. And as your pastor, I love you both equally. But the truth is the truth. And my brothers and sisters, I must speak the truth when it comes down to public error. The actions and behavior of our current governmental leadership is a blemish on our country and it is a shame before God. God help us as a nation. But my brothers and sisters, don't you think for one moment that what we are currently experiencing as a nation is a first? <laughs> No, no, no. It has happened before. This isn't the first conspiracy to happen. Even back in biblical days, we see conspirators at work. In our selected scriptural text for today. The Bible introduces us to two conspirators named Absalom and Ahithophel. Let me give you a brief snapshot on these two characters let me begin by letting you know that Absalom was the third son of King David. His mother was a foreigner of Israel named Mecca, who was the daughter of Talmai, king of of Geisha. Absalom was one of the six sons born to David at Hebron by David's six different wives. Absalom had a sister named Tamar. His older brother named Amnon, who was born to another one of David's wives, had a love Jones for Absalom's sister, Tamar. And at the advice of a friend, Amnon was told to fake like he is sick, and then ask King David to send Tamar to his house to fix him a meal. When Tamar gets there, Amnon forcibly rapes his stepsister Tamar and then throws her out into the street. Upon finding out what was done to his sister by Amnon, Absalom makes up his mind 
that he is going to kill Amnon for defiling his sister. Some two years later, Absalom makes good on his plot to kill his brother Amnon. Absalom flees to Geshur to his grandfather Talmai, the king of Geshur, and stays there three long years. But while Absalom was in Geshur, the Bible says that David longed to see Absalom, for he was consoled concerning Amnon's death. So David's trusted servant named Joab, after discovering that David longed to see Absalom, conspired to bring Absalom back to Jerusalem from Geshur. Joab formed a conspiracy with a woman of Tekoa to go to David and tell him a false story about her one son killing her other son. David, after hearing the woman's story, concludes that Joab is behind this woman's coming to him. And he sends for Joab and tells Joab to go to Geshur and bring Absalom back. David tells Joab that when Absalom returns, that he must go to his own house and that Absalom must not see his face. For two years, brothers and sisters, Absalom did not see his father David's face. So Absalom sent to Joab twice to intervene on his behalf to see his father David. <laughs> but Joab refused to respond to Absalom's request. So let me tell you what Absalom did. Absalom had Joab's field of barley set on fire to get Joab's attention. Joab finally goes to King David and King David calls for Absalom to come and see him. <laughs> now when we get to the beginning verses of chapter 15. Absalom at this time has caught on to the fact that if he waited for his father David to die, that possibly the throne of David would be given to another of David's sons. 
So Absalom conspires to convince the people of Israel that if he was in power, that all would get justice. The Bible says that Absalom would show up at the city gate where justice would normally be exercised and he would find out the status of those who were seeking justice. If they were a part of King David's kingdom, Absalom would convince them that he was the right one for the job of dispensing justice. And the Bible says that Absalom stole the hearts of the people by his words and by his antics. So, in order to pull off his conspiracy against his father David, Absalom first provided himself with a chariot and horses and with 50 men to run ahead of him. <laughs> he then goes to David and asks him for permission to go to Hebron in order to fulfill a vow that he has made to God. And that vow was if God allowed him to return to Jerusalem, that he would worship God in Hebron and offer sacrifices to God. The Bible says that David gives Absalom his blessing to go to Hebron, not knowing that Absalom was conspiring against him. So, Absalom sent secret messengers throughout the tribes of Israel to say, as soon as you hear the sounds of the trumpets, then you all say that Absalom is king in Hebron. <laughs> and the Bible says that Absalom took 200 men from Jerusalem who knew nothing about his conspiracy. He invited them as guests, but they ended up looking like conspirators. And let me say right here that you and I have to be careful of who we choose to hang out with. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? I said we got to be careful of who we choose to hang out with. For the persons that you hang out with can get you in a world of trouble. Am I right about it? How many people are in jail today because they were hanging out with the wrong crowd? Oh, Lord, have mercy. 
Absalom conspires to announce himself as king even before those who were with him even knew it. That's just like our president saying he won the election even before all the ballots were tallied. <laughs> what a disgrace. Well, we will soon discover in our scriptural text that Absalom was not alone in his conspiracy to overthrow his father, King David. The Bible says, I'm, 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 I'm sticking with the Bible. The Bible says that Absalom sent for Ahithophel, the Gilanite, who previously served as his father David's most trusted advisor and counselor. Ahithophel has now switched sides and joined in the conspiracy to get rid of David and place Absalom on the throne. Now, I know you want to know, why would Ahithophel conspire against David if he was once his trusted advisor and counselor? Well, my brothers and sisters, it was believed that Ohithophel was Bathsheba's uncle who did not like how David dealt with Bathsheba and her husband, Uriah. You remember David had Uriah placed in the front lines and he got killed. So Ahithophel saw an opportunity to get back at David. So he took it. He joined with Absalom in the conspiracy to dethrone King David. The Bible lets us know that Ahithophel counsels Absalom to go to Jerusalem and assert his newfound authority by taking possession of his father David's harem. Why, Pastor Wood? Because this would serve as a public act declaring that his father David was dead or replaced. He also counseled Absalom to attack David before he could muster up an army. But this counsel was rejected by Absalom and one of David's other counselors named Hushai. Hushai influenced Absalom not to attack David until a later time. And brothers and sisters, this was all in the plan of God to overthrow Absalom's and Ahithophel's conspiracy. 
So on this Sunday morning, I stopped by New Providence Missionary Baptist Church to warn someone who is watching and listening to watch out for Absalom and Ahithophel. The Absalom and the Ahithophel that we need to watch out for today is Absalom could be Donald Trump and Ahithophel, his counselor, Rudy Giuliani. They are conspiring along with others to overthrow the express wishes of the American people. But I've got some good news to end this sermon on. <laughs> Remember, fellow believers, that the Bible teaches us, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that is what he shall reap. If you sow lies, you'll reap lies. If you sow misinformation, you reap misinformation. Come on, somebody. And so, my brothers and sisters, when you are dealing with Absalom, and when you are dealing with with Ahithophel, just remember that God is never diminished by any rebellion. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? I said that God is never diminished by any rebellion, conspiracy, or conspirators. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that I don't care who shows up. I don't care who misleads. That God is still the King of Kings. And he is the Lord of Lords. <laughs> he is still omnipotent. That means he has all power in his hands. And he still sits high and lifted up. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. When you are dealing with Absalom and Ohithophel, remember that God is never diminished by any rebellion or conspiracy. And secondly, remember that pride, manipulation, and political ambition leads to downfall. Oh, okay, okay. I, I said that pride, manipulation, and political ambition leads to downfall. And my final point that I want you to remember is that God can foil any conspiracies brought against us. Did you hear what I said? I know folk might be lying on you. They may be putting out false information on you. But just remember, believer, that God can foil, interrupt any conspiracies that are brought against his people. David says it like this. He says, the Lord 
is my light <laughs> and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. <laughs> of whom shall I be afraid? When my win enemies, when the wicked and my enemies and my foes come up to eat up my flesh, he says God will cause them to stumble and fall. In other words, God can foil all of that stuff that they try to bring upon us. I'm glad that I serve a God who has all authority, all power, and he knows. I said he knows. He knows the truth. He knows the right. He knows what should happen. And so I will trust in the Lord and I believe that no weapon formed against me shall prosper because God has the power to foil the enemy's plans and I don't know about you but in these days my hope my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly, completely lean on Jesus' name, new providence and friends on Christ. I said on Christ on Christ, not on the Democrats, not on the Republicans, but on Christ, the solid rock, I stand all on the ground. I said, all on the ground is sinking, sinking sand. The conspiracy. Watch out for Absalom and Ahithophel. 